Hello, my name is Vanessa. Welcome to Ortho Refresh. This video reviews anatomical and directional terminology related to the hand and wrist. This enables optimal communication between the primary care provider and the hand specialist. Enjoy. Okay, why don't you join along, grab a piece of paper. You can see that on the left side I have outlined my left hand. Then on the right side I drew a compass with four arrows, one going north, one south, one east, and one west. Then draw another arrow in the southwest corner as though the arrow is coming out of the page, sort of three-dimensional. Then draw another arrow in the northeast corner as though it's going into the page or away from us. Since we drew our hand face down, these arrows are representing the, those directions. So the further away from the center of the body, we're going to use the word distal. Then the direction coming closer to the body, we use proximal. The arrow in the southwest corner is coming out of the page at us, so it's referring to the back of the hand. That direction is dorsal. Then the arrow in the northeast corner is as though it's pointing into the paper or towards the palm of the hand. So we use the word palmer or volar. Next, we remember where the radius and ulna are located in the form. You don't have to draw these. I've drawn them for reference and labeled R and U for radius and ulna. So the direction going toward the radius side of the hand and wrist, we use the word radial. And the other direction, we use the word ulnar. Now regarding the names of the fingers, some people number these, though the numbering is not consistent. In hand surgery and communicating, we want to use exactly what they're called. So first, thumb, then index, then long or middle finger, then ring, and then small or little finger. Next we talk about some of the locations. Regarding the joints, it is important to remember that MCP joint is where the metacarpals meet the phalanx of the fingers. Then there are two IP joints or interphalangeal. The more distal of the two is the DIP joint for distal interphalangeal. And the more proximal of the two is the PIP joint or proximal interphalangeal. The thumb has the MCP joint and then just one IP joint. It is neither distal nor proximal, just simply the thumb IP joint. I have not drawn them here, but at the proximal end of the metacarpals are the CMC joints for the carpo-metacarpal joints. Then where the carpus meet up with the radius and ulna, that is the radiocarpal joint. Okay, so to put this into practice, let's uh, pretend we've got a patient that's got a laceration. I've drawn it on my hand here. We're going to use the terminology and the wording that we just used, that vocabulary, to describe this laceration. So when we describe something, we always start vague and then we get more specific. So we start with, there's a laceration of the left hand, starting at the dorsal index MCP joint, extending radially 
to the volar PIP crease. If you use that terminology, whether you typed it in your note or were communicating over the phone, we as a specialist would know, okay, we need to know are the flexor tendons intact? Is the radial neurovascular bundle working? Is the radial digital nerve okay? How are the extensor tendons to the index finger? EIP and EDC to index, how are they? Those would be the things we already would be thinking about with that description versus there's a laceration on the top of the second knuckle. Doesn't communicate that quite as clearly. Well, I hope this has been helpful for you. If you're interested in more videos like this, please hit subscribe. If you have any questions or thoughts, go ahead and leave those below in the comments. Also, click the thumbs up if this was a video that you liked and content that you're interested in. We are also on Instagram and Facebook. You can check us out there. We'd love to hear from you. If you have any other thoughts, go ahead and leave us a message. Ortholefresh.com exists to provide continuing orthopedic education at your fingertips. Thanks for watching.